Hello, everyone. Welcome to Safe Food Alliance, the Kingsburg Center. I'm Thomas Jones, your Senior Director of Analytical Services, and it's my pleasure to give you this virtual tour of our facility. We start right here at this wonderful mural that shows the valley in springtime and all of our wonderful crops that we are happy and proud to test here. Come on, let's go. Welcome to our microbiology department. This is where we're testing food products to make sure that they don't have any dangerous pathogens or microbes that can cause spoilage. When the samples come in, the first step is for them to be processed. They've come through our sample proceedings, so they already have a little name tag on them that tells them, tells us what the testing is going to be and uh, what the uh, sample number is. You can see that we have some cold storage facilities there for things that are perishable. But in here, we're going to be doing things like weighing samples out or using them to inoculate media that will allow them to grow if there are any pathogens there. Over here, we put things inside of our incubators. Those incubators are basically you know, big ovens at a certain set temperature that are just ideal for growing certain types of microbes. This is called the incubation period. After that incubation period, they go to the other side of our facility where we can actually count the microbes or test to see if there are any dangerous pathogens. This is our main chemistry prep room, where a lot of the magic happens on the chemistry side. In this aisle here, we see people prepping samples for mycotoxin analysis. Mycotoxins are chemicals produced by molds that can be toxic to humans and animals, so we have to test the food to make sure that it's safe. As we go over into this area, we see more things going on a variety of different types of extractions, distillations, looking for things like preservatives, looking for things like pesticide residues. Once we get the samples prepped here, they'll go into our instrument rooms where we actually measure those levels. In this room, we do a lot of different types of extractions, preparations for our pesticide residue analysis. So you see a lot of different types of specialized equipment in here that we can do different types extractions, cryo milling of products so we can basically use liquid nitrogen to pulverize that material and make it better homogenized when we do our extractions. And so this is an area of extreme interest and growth in our area. Uh, we've seen more and more pesticide residues that customers are wanting to have tested in their food products. Welcome to our uh, HPLC mass spectrometer uh, portion of the laboratory. In these instrument rooms, we have very sensitive pieces of equipment that are looking at trace amounts of pesticide residues. So we find that there are strict regulations both in the United States and internationally on the levels of pesticides, the types of pesticides that are allowed in foods. We are able to see down into literally the part per billion range, and uh, the sophistication of this instrumentation improves each and every year. So we're always looking at lower and lower levels. Welcome to the main instrument room of our chemistry laboratory. In here we're doing uh, a lot of the routine analyses. I think we've seen our mass spectrometers, which are our, uh, the, sort of the high-tech aces of the laboratory looking for those tiny amounts of pesticides. But in here we have a lot of our workhorse instruments that are cranking out huge amounts of the same analysis over and over. These instruments here are HPLCs with robotic systems for looking for aflatoxin and ovotoxin. Those are those mole toxins we talked about earlier. We do a lot of those samples during our harvest season. We need to know what those levels are to make sure the samples are safe before they're shed. So you will see a lot of activity in this area when they're very busy. In the back, we have other instruments that do things like looking for residues of fumigants, looking for other types of chemical uh, contaminants or uh, preservatives or other products that are in foods. So one of the cool things that we do that's pretty unique here is we actually raise insects. Now uh, a lot of the food products that you eat every day face the potential of insect infestation and destruction before they get from the farmer all the way to the consumer. And so a number of the things that we look at are researches we research our practices to try and basically control those insects, prevent them from destroying that food. 
we look at things like fumigants, we look at things like cold storage and other impacts that can actually reduce those insect levels, we actually are able to raise insects that are commonly found in stored products. This is called a red flower beetle. You may have found these at some point or another if you had, say, a box of pancake mix in your house and you forgot about it. It was sitting up in the, in the shelf somewhere in your kitchen. We raise a series of these different moths and beetles that are common storage pests. And what we can actually do is take these little containers and sell those to our customers. Our customers are actually able to put those in their fumigation chambers and uh, make sure that they are actually killing the insects. So this great spacious room is our training center. We call this the Kingsburg Center because it isn't just a laboratory. We do a number of things here. And this training facility is a prime example of that. We have the ability to do rather large classes here, uh, trainings on food safety, industry issues. Uh, we have this thing wired so that we're able to, to do Zoom meetings. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, facility. We really enjoy having it here. So we, we not only do our own trainings for our own company, but we open it up to our clients and to the rest of the agricultural and food industry community to use as a meeting center. It's not just a resource for our company, but it's a resource for the food and agricultural industry in this area.